What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at a super small form factor Ryzen powered mini PC that I picked up on AliExpress. Now this really doesn't have a name as you can see here. It's the Pocket Windows 11 AMD Ryzen R3 7320U. And what makes this so interesting is it's using a Ryzen Mendocino chip. It's not a super powerful chip given the form factor we're working with here. It's actually got a 15 watt TDP, it does boost up a little higher in this thing. And I purchased this about a month ago. It did take quite some time to get to me. And we've seen very similar mini PCs on the market, but most of them are powered by Intel, like the N100 or the N200. This was the first Ryzen version that I saw, so I knew I had to get my hands on it. And one cool thing about these PCs is they support two M.2 drives. Now they are PCIe 3 drives. I'm just gonna put a 256 gig drive in here. I bought a bare bones unit. But I do believe you can pick this up with 128, 256, or 512 gigabytes of storage pre-installed. I've got a few things that I want to show off in this video. We're going to do some testing here. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by SK Hynix and their new Tube T31 external solid state flash drive with DRAM. So this portable SSD fits right in your pocket, up to 1000 megabytes per second or 10 gigabits per second. It's compatible with the PS4, PS5, Xbox, Windows, or even your Mac. But personally, I use these as external Steam drives, mainly because I'm always working with different mini PCs and full-size PCs. Having everything loaded up on this, I can just bring it from PC to PC or laptop to laptop. And just to give you an idea here, I'll go ahead and transfer a game. And the one major thing that sets this apart from a lot of the other portable SSDs out there is the fact that this has DRAM. This allows for faster loading, smoother gameplay, and even when this thing is fully loaded down, you're not going to experience any loss in performance like other products without DRAM built in. I actually wasn't expecting it to transfer that fast, but another thing I did here was run a quick benchmark. And over on their website, they claim that this will do 1000 megabytes per second or 10 gigabits per second. Checking out Crystal Disk here, we're actually over that mark on read and write. The Tube T31 Stick SSD from SK Hynix has been great, and if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links in the description in case you want to get your hands on one of these. Taking a look around the unit, up front here, basically all we've got is our power button and an LED indicator. But when we move around back, we've actually got a bunch of I.O. given the form factor. From the left to the right, USB Type-C for power input. That's all this does. It doesn't transfer any data or anything like that. We've also got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, a real USB-C port. But unfortunately, in my testing, I've not been able to get video out of this port. We've also got gigabit ethernet, full-size HDMI, and three USB 3 ports. When it comes to the specs, like I mentioned, this is using that AMD Ryzen 7320U. Four cores, eight threads, up to 4.1, but while I've been doing my testing, I've not seen it hit 4.1, up to around 3.7. Eight gigs of LP DDR5 at 5500 MHz. It's got the AMD Radeon 610M iGPU. It's based on RDNA 2. We've only got two compute units, but it does clock up to 1900 megahertz. This has Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 5.2, two M.2 slots, and I'm gonna be running Windows 11 Home. Jumping right into it, we're running Windows 11 Home. And as you can see, we've got that Ryzen 3 7320U, four cores, eight threads. The main thing that's really going to hold this back, I mean, even though we're working with a lower end APU, is the RAM amount here. We've only got 8 gigs. It is running at 5500, and it's set up in a dual channel configuration. But having something like 16 or even 12, which we've seen with some of these other mini PCs, would be really nice here. And of course, we've got the Radeon graphics. This is really the Radeon 610M. We've got two CUs here, and this should clock up to 1900 megahertz. But the one thing I wanted to check out here was the total TDP. This is really a 15 watt chip, but uh, if we stress this thing out, I've got hardware info right over here. You can see this jumps up 21 watts. So that's as high as we can go. And at 21 watts, I mean, this thing's basically maxed out. If I open up, let's say GPU Z here, just put a load on that GPU you can see that the GPU clock does get up to 1900 megahertz, even though we're at a 21 watt TDP. So even though this is running at a relatively low wattage, and as we know with this 7320U, it is a low wattage chip, we can reach those clocks. So we can get the best performance we could expect out of this thing in this mini PC. And I gotta say, with this little Ryzen chip, it's really not that bad for web browsing, email checking, YouTube video playback. If we head over to, let's say, AMD's website right here, 
everything loads up pretty quickly. We do have Wi-Fi 5. This is not Wi-Fi 6 here. But keep in mind, we do have gigabit Ethernet on the rear of this thing. But everything does load up pretty quickly. I'm actually pretty surprised at how snappy this thing is. So I wanted to show you a little bit of uh, YouTube video playback. We'll try some 4K here. Not sure how well it's going to handle it, but uh, we'll give it a try here. 4K. And again, I don't know how well it's going to do with 4K, but we'll give it a shot here. We've got Stats for Nerds up in the top left-hand corner. That'll show us the drop frames. And so far, we're not dropping any, but keep in mind, we are using the Chrome browser. If you were to go with Edge, there's a chance we'd see a few drop here or there. But overall, I mean, with this little chip, given that it's got that Radeon 610M, it should handle 4K video playback. And as you can see here, I mean, it's trucking right through. It's actually doing way better than I thought it would. So far, seeing some pretty decent performance here. When it comes to temps, this thing is getting on up there. I've seen it hit around 85 degrees Celsius, and that little fan is spinning up. But it's such a small fan, it's really not making a ton of noise. But yeah, I do think that we could definitely hit thermal throttle, especially while gaming. But the next thing I wanted to check out are some benchmarks. Geekbench 6, single core, 1,302. Multi, looking good for what we've got here with a 4,215. And this is kind of in comparison to other mini PCs with something like the N100 or the N200 from Intel. I also wanted to check out GPU performance, so I ran 3D Mark Night Rain, and we're seeing a pretty low 7,031, just to kind of give you an idea. The Radeon 780M in the new 8000 series is up to around 30,000, 28 to 31,000, depending on the platform. But I still want to test out some gaming on this thing, so let's go ahead and move over there now. Starting off light here, because after all, we only have two compute units on that RDNA 2i GPU. Hades 2, running much better than I thought. We're at 1080p, low settings, and I was hoping we could do 120 hertz across the board with it, but you see it definitely dips down underneath that. Be gone from here. I also tested out Cuphead. We're at 1080, and going into it, I knew we'd be able to run this just fine. Indie games and older stuff is gonna run pretty decently. Even something like Half-Life 2. Right now, we're actually at 1080 high settings. And if you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left-hand corner, pulling close to 20 watts on that TDP. But for the most part, we're over 120 FPS with this game. And I know it's an older one, but I went into this at 900p just knowing what we're working with here with that Mendocino chip. Looking pretty good here for 1080 gameplay. And the final game I tested here is one of my all-time favorites, OG Skyrim. With this, I did go down to 900p. I thought we'd be okay at 1080 low settings with this game, but right now we're at 900 medium. At 1080 low, we do get some major dips coming on down. And again, from Afterburner, anywhere from 18 up to 22 watts. So this thing isn't going to play Cyberpunk 2077. It's not going to play Black Myth Wukong. But for indie games and older games, anywhere from 720 up to 1080, depending on what you've got. And given the form factor, I think performance here isn't all that bad. The final thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU temps and total system power consumption. And for CPU temps, I was a bit worried about this. It is actively cooled. There's a small fan in here with a copper heat sink. Average gaming, 78 degrees Celsius. And during one of my games, it did hit 87 degrees Celsius, which is thermal throttle for this chip or the way it's set up right now. And as for total system power consumption, I've got this plugged into a kilowatt meter while doing my testing. At idle, it's only pulling 7 watts. Average gaming, up to around 25. And the maximum I saw this hit was only 28 watts. So it is a relatively low power consumption mini PC, but this thing does get a bit steamy for what we've got here. So is it worth picking this thing up? Well, at $208, I personally wouldn't pick this one up. There are other mini PCs that you can get for around $240 with a much more powerful Ryzen CPU, like Ryzen 6000, especially over on AliExpress. Ryzen 7000, getting real close to that price right now. And given that it took so long to ship to me, I was actually worried that I'd never get the thing. It's kind of hard for me to recommend this, but if you've got a specific use case scenario for this, it might make sense to you, so I'm going to leave links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you want to see running on this thing, just let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.